Hello, 10th grade. In this short video, I just want to further orient you to our next unit. And I hope that you, through the email, were able to get yourself set up with your binder and your New Testament biblical allusions and Cornell note pages. Again, I'd be happy to mail a set of biblical allusions to any of you. I did make five copies and uh, just email me with your home address and I'll put those in the mail to you if you can't print them. Um, I hope that you have also taken some time to read the two pages at the very beginning of the New Testament reader and get you a little bit oriented to this material and um, jotted down your questions. When we meet online on Tuesday, you'll have a chance to answer those questions. More generally, I want to say that this unit, although it deals with Christianity, is just like any of our other units. We're approaching it as people who are trying to understand early civilizations and looking at a core sacred text um, and just because you may have had experiences or know people who've had experiences with 21st century Christianity and churches, um, that doesn't mean that we're seeing or trying to instill some sort of overlap between those two. What happens in church on Sunday is its own world. And what we're doing as we look back this very early period in the development of Christianity is totally separate um, and not really a religious exercise. It's a scholarly exercise, just as our other units have been. So it might be useful at this point to pause so that you can get some Cornell note pages, because I'm going to give you just a little bit more orientation to how this unit fits in historically with what we have done before. And um, this can be a continuation of uh, where you've left off in your Cornell notes. Uh, it won't be that long. So we're back. And um, of course, our first two units of the semester were um, the continuation of the ancient Judea unit and then ancient Greece. And um, what we didn't really emphasize as we were doing those is that those two civilizations existed simultaneously at different parts of the world. So um, Judeans continued to follow the what they call Mosaic law after Moses for hundreds and hundreds of years. Um, and that time overlapped with ancient Greece and classical Greece. Um, and yet there was very little contact. With the fall of Greece and the rise of Rome, the baton of polytheism changes hands. So um, we can use the benchmark of the Battle of Corinth around 146 BCE, where the Romans defeated um, the Greeks as a kind of rough breaking point. Greece at that point had no more political independence. They were under the rule of Rome. Yet the polytheistic values and the gods that um, they worshipped moved into the Roman context. So what's interesting is that in the New Testament, we will see these uh, two civilizations clash. So the Judaic civilization, which Jesus was born into, falls under Roman authority. I think I mentioned in the classical world that um, the Roman Empire had these client kings and governors, and one of which ruled over Judea. And so we will see these early Christians, the followers of Jesus, 
come into conflict with that Roman authority. So now we have a polytheistic civilization, Rome, in direct conflict with this monotheistic civilization. And by that, I mean, yes, Judea, but also the new monotheistic religion that will emerge out of that, which is Christianity. And yet, you might be thinking, well, we know that ultimately, hundreds of years later, Rome is going to become the seat of Christendom. That's where the Pope is going to be, right? So the conflict between these two cultures, which both have roots that feed our own culture, which is to say Greco-Roman civilization and Judeo-Christian civilization must be very important. How those conflicts happen and how they are resolved are keys to understanding the next phase in the evolution of human consciousness. And I'll take a pause there.